Hello, everyone. This is the lecture for section 5.3, the divergence tests and the integral tests. So in section 5.1, uh, we learned about sequences, right? And in section 5.2, we learned about series, right? And um, so we started to define stuff for each one, for sequences and for series in both of those sections, right? Uh, and sort of like the underpinning, the underlying sort of um, a theory, right? We built off of sequences and based off of the sort of uh, the theory for the sequences, we're able to do stuff for series, right? Uh, for the rest of chapter five and for chapter six, we're going to be using a lot of series stuff, okay? It's in particular, we're going to determine whether a series either diverges or converges. That's what's happening for the rest of chapter five and chapter six, okay? Um, <laughs> Keep in mind, right, when, when we did section 5.2, uh, we had to define what it meant for a series, right, to converge or diverge, right? And the way that we did that was uh, we, um, we looked at the partial sums. Sometimes we got a formula, sometimes we didn't. We looked at the partial sums, right? And uh, those partial sums produced a sequence. And we then saw if uh, those sequences converged. And if that sequence of the partial sums converged, right, then the series itself converges, right? We're gonna develop more of that uh, for the rest of this chapter, right? So um, the first one that we're gonna be using is the divergence test, okay? Uh, the divergence test, let me actually highlight it as we go along here. If your limit is equal to something not equal to zero, if the limit of each one of the terms is not equal to something, or sorry, if it's equal to something that's not equal to zero, so pick any other number that's not zero, right? Or if the limit does not exist, right? Then the series itself diverges, okay? So let's go ahead and do some of these, yeah? <clears throat> Uh, this is practically like good old, it's as simple as you think, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the limit for this first one, right? N goes to infinity of E to the minus two over N, right? That is equal to, I'm going to rewrite it a little bit, right? Limit as N goes to infinity of one over e to the two divided by n, okay? That's a pre-calc trick, right? And this is equal to, uh, went too fast, uh, one over e to the limit as n goes to infinity, right? Of two, two over n, right? Now, uh, same stuff that we were using in calc one, you can use here, right? So. If you take the limit as n goes to infinity of two divided by n, right? You guys hopefully can see that this thing, right? Goes to zero. So then this is equivalent to one divided by e to the zero, right? And anything to the zero power is one. So this is one over one. So then this is equal to one, right? Now, a divergence test said, if it's equal to anything that's not equal to zero, right, or does not exist, then the series diverges. So automatically we get that this diverges. No more thought needs to go into it. We are done, okay? Next one. So again, right, we have to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of n cubed divided by three n cubed minus one, right? So hopefully you guys remember how to do this kind of limit, right? You divide by the biggest power that you see, right? So this is gonna be equal to, right? Limit as n goes to infinity of n cubed divided by n cubed. I'm dividing everything, right? By that n cubed. So it's gonna be three n cubed minus one over n cubed. Let me actually make that a little shorter. And that's gonna be on the bottom, right? This is equal to limit and then goes to infinity. Actually, let me do it on a new line, yeah? Equal to limit as n goes to infinity of one 
divided by uh, 3 minus 1 over n cubed. Let me write that better. 1 over n cubed, right? And if you guys remember the argument that happened in Calc 1, right? 1 over n cubed, as that goes to infinity, as the n goes to infinity with that one, that goes to 0. So this is equal to 1, whoops, 1 third. And it, since it's equal to the 1 third, we can say automatically diverges. So it doesn't, it, so long as it's anything that's not zero, right? You can automatically say that your sequence is gonna diverge, okay? The last one is a little tricky, but not too far, not too far off. Let me show you guys what um, the trickiness that this one shows, okay? Uh, again, I have to do the same thing, limit right, as n goes to infinity of negative one to the n e to the, uh, whoops, negative e, negative e to the negative n, right, plus 0.5. Okay, hopefully you guys uh, remember, this might, hopefully this sort of ticked you off. This thing right here, that thing right there, is uh, making it an alternating series. It's gonna make it bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? Specifically, right? Uh, it's gonna split this thing into two sort of subsequences, right? The limit as n goes to infinity of uh, the positive ones, right? So this is gonna be a negative, negative e to the minus n plus five, right? So basically, this is when n is odd, right? If these happen, right, then you get limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 over e to the n plus 0.5. I forgot the 0.5 here. There we go. Right. And if you guys take a look at this now, this tends to zero. So this is gonna be equal to, whoops, wrong color, equal to 0.5, right? If I do n odd, right, I get limit as n goes to infinity of negative one times negative e the minus n plus 0.5, right? <clears throat> And in this case, I get limit n goes to infinity of e to the minus n minus 0.5, in which case this is now equal to negative 0.5, right? Because this thing right here tends to zero still, right? So what you have here, right, is the limit, right? is it does not exist. And this can happen, it says right there, right? So since this one is a limit that does not exist, right, this also diverges. All done, simple enough, right? Like I said, you can still use all the Calc 1 stuff for um, evaluating a limit uh, here as well. So um, if you need to divide by the highest power, go ahead and do so, right? Um, if you needed to take it inside of a function. If you need to take the limit inside of a function, do it. Um, if you need to use L'Hopital's to prove something, do it. So technically, right, this one in the middle, we could have used L'Hopital's rule on as well, and we would have gotten the same answer. Okay? Okay, cool. Let me move on to the next one, the more heavy hitting one. Okay? And that one's the integral test. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me, got a little bit of a dry throat there. Okay, the integral test is one that requires our knowledge of integrals to determine the behavior of a series, okay? Um, the first thing I want to recall, right, and this is way back from uh, chapter one from this class, is the limit summation definition of what an integral is. So remember, right, this is what I'm getting at, that if we had an integral, right, from a to b of f of x dx, right? That is equivalent to the limit as k goes to infinity 
of the summation of these things, right? And each one of these, right, was an AI, which was a box, right? Let me put that, right? It was gonna be a rectangle of height uh, F of XI star, right? Uh, and width, W-I-D-T-H, uh, delta X, right? If you don't remember that, go back to chat, uh, section 1.1. 1 .1. uh, this is how we did uh, the area under a curve. We said, you know, we did a bunch of rectangles. The rectangles got skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And then when we added them all up, it was a better and better and better approximation to our integral. As we took the limit of uh, the number of boxes going to infinity, that meant even better and even better approximation. The second we took the limit, we had an integral on our hands, right? So hopefully you guys remember that. Now, we need this, okay? Because we're gonna sort of deconstruct a little bit of our um, of our definition of uh, an integral so that we can determine something about series, okay? So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and determine, uh, I'm gonna suppose that we have a series a sub n, right? Where all of, all of the a sub n values are positive, okay? We can rewrite our series, right? That's defined by this a sub n and make it almost look, almost, almost look like the summation of an integral, the summation version of an integral. We're gonna be, we're gonna be able to make it look something like this, right? And then we're gonna play around with that. So let me go through the computation that I'm talking about. Here's my series, right? Cool. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna grab the infinity, right? I can do the limit as k goes to infinity. I can give it a k, right? Uh, my a sub n, I can multiply every single a sub n by one and it doesn't change anything, right? Okay. So we're good there. All I did was stuck a limit out front, right? And then made it go to k. So now I have partial sums, right? Uh, the next step between these two, between this step, and this step, right, is this. The limit's already out front, right? But I'm gonna make my one equal to my delta x, right? Okay. Between the next two steps, between these two steps, this one, right, and this one, the limit's already outside. I'm saying my delta x is equal to one, right, from my previous step. There's this bit right here. I'm making my a sub n equal to some f of n, okay? Cool, okay. And now the final step, right? The final step is going from here, right, to here. That is sort of us turning uh, the summation and the limit that we have uh, in the first yellow, right, in this yellow, right? We're turning it into the integral form that is in the blue that I'm highlighting there, okay? So the way that we can look at a summation, right, is we can go ahead and say that my a sub n's, right, I can turn them into a function f of x, right, with each one of my widths, each one of my delta x's being equal to one, okay? So we have this formulation right here. Let me cover it again. We have that a series in and of itself, right, can be transformed using all of the stuff that's in between, right? We can turn it into an integral defined by a function f of x, okay? With each one of my boxes equaling one, okay? So now we have two possibilities here, okay? So let me scroll down. We have two prox uh, possibilities here that we have a left end approximation or a right end approximation. So let me go, oh, no, 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 no. I wanted it in black ink and now I need to do this again. There we go. Okay, and then let me do another, oh, not ink to shape, that thing. I'm drawing an X, Y axis here. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Okay, 
move that up a bit or move it. Okay, never mind. I'm not going to move it. It doesn't want to. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's okay. Let's see. And then there we go. Okay. So now what I want to do, let me scroll back up, right? Is we're going to compare, right? These two right here, we're going to compare what the pink one looks like graphically and what the purple one looks like graphically. Okay. And like I said, there's only two possibilities, right? A right end approximation and a left end approximation because our a sub n's are specifically like, you know, they're above the, um, they're above one, they're above two, they're above three, right? So let me explain what I'm talking about here. And let me actually move that over a little bit. I do want to give a little bit more space to the graph that I'm about to do. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to draw an f of x, a nice one. There we go, right? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw, I'm going to put, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot, 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 right? And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, dot, 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 right? Okay. I'm going to look at the left end approximations first. Okay. So the left end approximations, they look something like this, right? So if you guys remember how the left end approximations work, they're the boxes that go over each one of these, right? But the box is sort of, the height is dictated by the left end of your box, right? Or the left end of your sub interval, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Five. Whoa. Look at me go. Can't draw a straight line. There you go. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Right? So that is the left end approximation. Now let me do the right end approximation. It's the same thing, right? Except each one of the uh, rectangles the height of each one of the rectangles is dictated by the right-hand side. So instead of the left, it's going to be the right. This is going to be the box here. Boom. That one. That one. That one. So hopefully you guys see what's going on here. Right, and I keep going, dot, 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 okay? So we have the following, okay? We have either A1, uh, whoops, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, dot, 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 right? And we have an A1, A2, a3, A4, A5, A6, A7, dot, 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 right? So these are the only two options that we have, right? And now what I want to do is I'm going to look at the areas. So I want you guys to look at this right here. This right here, I'm going to draw it in pink. There we go. This area that's right here, right? Since this is, uh, since the boxes, if you notice the, the drawing, right? Uh, the boxes land above the curve. Does that make sense? So we have this going on. We have that the summation as n equal one to infinity of a sub n, right? This is my pink, this is my area in the pink, right? we have that this is strictly greater than the integral from one to infinity of my f of x, dx. Well, if my curve there is f of x, right? Cool? 
Awesome. Now, let's go on and do the right end approximation. So same idea, right? This area in the pink, this area in the pink is the combined area, right, of my summation, of my series. So we have the sum n equal one to infinity of a sub n, right? And in this case, right, notice that all of them, all of the boxes are below f of x, right? So this is going to be strictly less than the integral from one, let me draw a nice integral, from one to infinity of f of x dx. That is my pink there, right? Okay. So now let's play around with the sort of the logic behind this, right? On the left end approximation, we can see that uh, if we take the a ends to be areas of rectangles, right? And they end up being left end approximations, right? Then our summation, our series is going to be much bigger than the area under the curve from one to infinity, right? And for the right end approximations, we see that each one of the boxes, right? Is each uh, is one of the terms in our series, right? So the combined area of all of our bo boxes are strictly less than the area of our integral from one to infinity, right? This is enough for us to make some results, okay? So let me explain what happens here, right? If we use the left end approximation, so if we use this one over here, right? If we use this one over here, all of the rectangles are uh, above. Ooh, typo, typo, above, above, above. Let me. I confused myself, there we go. All of the rectangles are above the function f of x. Does that make sense? So we can make this conclusion here. If our integral diverges, right, then so does that summation, so does that series, solely by using the comparing of areas, right? The area of my boxes is got to be bigger than my the area of my integral. And since my integral already diverges, right, then the summation, the series must as well, right? Same argument for the right end approximations. Using the right end approximations, right? Another typo. This is supposed to be uh, below. Look at me go. Uh, under the right end approximations, right? All of the rectangles uh, are below my function f of x, right? So we can make the opposite uh, conclusion here. If the integral converges, right? If the area under the f of x curve for the right end approximations converge, right? Then so does the summation. Then so does your series, okay? And that in itself provides us with the integral test, okay? So let me state the integral test out loud first, right? Suppose that you had uh, a series, right? with positive terms a sub n, right? And suppose there exists a function and a positive number n such that the following three conditions are met, okay? Uh, f of x has to be continuous. F of x has to be decreasing, right? And each one of the a sub n terms, each one of the a sub n terms is equivalent to the function when I plug in that n value. Okay, for all integers bigger than a specific n uh, somewhere down uh, the integer line, right? Then we can make this conclusion right here. Then either both of these together converge or both diverge. Okay, so that's the only two options. Either the summation uh, and the integral both converge or the integral and the summation both diverge. That is the that is the argument that we get. And that comes from all of this stuff that's above here. That comes from uh, our comparing of areas. Okay. So now, this is actually pretty cool, because now we can determine if something is 
uh, we can determine if a sequence is, uh, or, or a series is increasing or decrease, uh, bleh, sorry. We can determine whether or not a series is converging or diverging, right? Based off of the integral that's associated with it. Cool? Okay. Now, I, I gotta say this, um, in all of my knowledge, uh, I looked through, hopefully some of you guys are following the textbook, uh, the version that I give above, the version, this version right here that I just described, um, I think there might be a typo in the version that appears in the book. I can't think of, uh, I, can, I can't think of why the textbook states it the way it does. It states these two things differently. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, this is sort of my judgment call. Um, it's mostly, nearly entirely the same all there, okay? Um, like I said, I think it's a typo on the textbook's part, okay? Um, so now, that's the only caveat I got. Let me go ahead and start doing some examples, yeah? So determine the convergence or divergence of the following series, right? So we can go ahead and grab this. We can go ahead and grab this sequence, right? Or this series, uh, and we can put it into our partial sums and sequences calculator. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna sort of split the screen here. Uh, hopefully you guys can see now, right? that g of x is gonna be this, one divided by x ln of x, right? There we are. And we need it at n equal two. So let's go ahead and do two here. So we don't get a bunch of undefined. There we go. So let me expand this a little bit. It does look like, so within the table itself, the table goes up to 100, right? But look at what's happening. It still keeps growing by a substantial amount, even at 70, 80, 90, 100, right? So if you take a look at this, right, just by looking at the graph and just comparing to what we have, this looks like it might diverge, right? This looks like it might diverge. So let's go ahead and just keep that in the back, you know, in our in the back of our pockets, right? And, uh, you know, behind, in, in the back of our heads. Uh, and let, let's run with this, right? So let's go ahead and do this summation now, right? So if you guys remember the uh, integral test itself, we have three conditions that we need to satisfy. That F needs to be continuous, F needs to be decreasing, and there has to be a function F of N that's equivalent to our sequence terms, our series terms, right? Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and do those three first, right? Before we start doing uh, the calculus-y stuff, right? So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna do conditions, right? I would want to start with the third one. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do one, two, three. I'm gonna first try to find that function. And hopefully you guys already saw that like I did in the um, in our calculator, right? I'm gonna say f of x is equal to one over x ln of x, okay? Now I'm gonna do the other two things. Uh, one, right, is f of x uh, continuous, right? And the way that we're gonna do that is this. Notice that if we need to take the integral, right? I'm gonna go ahead and write the integral that we need to take care of, right? It's gonna be from two to infinity of one over x ln of x, right? So we need, right, uh, f of x, right, right? Want to show that f of x, right, is continuous over two to infinity, right? So we need to show that this is, this function right here is continuous from two to infinity, which it is. And let me explain how. Um, the only spot where it would be discontinuous, right, is at zero. 
and one, when x is equal to zero and when x is equal to one. If x is equal to zero, right, uh, then we have one divided by zero, that's out, right? And uh, if we let x equal to one, right, uh, ln of one is equal to zero, so we have a divide by zero again, right? You guys see that? Those two values are outside of our our interval. You guys see that? So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. So uh, f of x, right? So I'm going to say no discontinuities. Uh, for f of x over 2 to infinity. So therefore, f is continuous. We're done. That was it. OK. Uh, Try to argue something like this every time you do these conditions. You can go ahead and you know slap this into Desmos and graph it, and you can you know do the um, the argument of uh, uh, you don't have to lift your pencil to draw the section. That's perfectly fine, right? But try to argue this uh, uh, when you see these kind of problems. Okay. The next one two tends to be a little harder. Okay, we have to show that f of x is decreasing, right? And uh, what I said in um, when we when I showed you guys the integral test just now, right? For option two, uh, I can use calculus one material. In particular, I'm going to go ahead and use the first derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and say f prime of x, and this is the derivative, negative ln of x plus one divided by x ln x quantity squared. OK, and notice what happens here, right? We want, right, uh, my interval that I'm going to be doing this over is going to be 2 to infinity, right? <clears throat> uh, in that interval, from 2 to infinity, my ln is positive. My x's are positive. So that means everything in here and in here are positive, right? Which leaves this up front a negative. So then therefore, the derivative over this strip right here is all negative. So f prime of x, <laughs> right, is less than zero, right? over negative, whoops, not negative two, over two to infinity, over two to infinity, right? So and therefore, f of x is decreasing. All right, we have everything satisfied, right, for our conditions for this particular function. We're off to the races. So now we can take the integral of the uh, series, and depending on that answer, we can determine whether or not this series either converges or diverges. Okay, so hopefully you guys see this already. Uh, we need to find this integral. We need to solve that integral somehow, right? This is gonna be an improper integral. So I have to do a the limit, t goes to infinity of the integral of two to t of one over x ln of x. Okay, uh, I'm going to separate this thing away so I can go ahead and do that integral, right? So the integral, ooh, let me make it nicer, integral from 2 to t of 1 over x ln of x, right? Uh, and this is dx. I forgot the dx here, dx. Hopefully you guys see it. It's going to be a u substitution. u is going to be ln of x du is going to be 1 over x dx. So that turns this integral into 1 over u du, right? Which is equal to ln of u. And now I'm going to undo my substitution. So it's going to be equal to the ln of the ln of x, right? Evaluated from 2 to t. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take this big, huge integral and continue uh, down below. So this is gonna be equal to the limit, t goes to infinity, right, of the ln of the ln of x evaluated from two to t equal to limit t goes to infinity of the ln of the ln of t minus the ln of the ln of two, okay, equal to, this is already a value, so no, no problem there, right? This is the thing that's gonna give us the problem. Well, not problem. This is the thing that we gotta analyze, right? To determine divergence. Uh, as t goes to infinity, right? Ln goes to infinity, which means the ln of the ln goes to infinity. So then this shoots into space. That's gonna be equal to infinity. So then therefore this limit is equal to infinite, right? This tells me that the integral, whoa, let me do that again. This tells me that the integral from two to infinity of one over x ln of x dx diverges, right? So then since, uh, 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 my pen just slipped. So that since this in integral diverges, right? The initial series must diverge as well. Okay. Since the integral diverges, the series must diverge as well. Okay. Okay. Not bad, right? I mean, it's a little tedious here and there, but it's not too bad. Okay. Let's try another one. Okay. Again, we have to start with conditions. So I'm going to go over here, conditions. So like I said, I like to start with three because that's what it's all based off of, right? Uh, three says that I need to find that function, right? Hopefully you guys see the function already, right? It's going to be f of x is equal to uh, x e to the minus x squared, right? Or I'm going to rewrite it, uh, x divided by x, whoops, e to the x squared. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do one, right? So for one, right, I need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this again, integral from zero to infinity, right? I'm gonna use the rewrite. It's gonna be x over e to the, uh, whoops, not, not, not negative, Ooh. positive x squared dx, right? Okay. We're, we're getting somewhere, right? So our interval that we're gonna have to play around with is this interval zero to infinity, right? So over zero to infinity, we need to prove that uh, our f of x is continuous over zero to infinity. Okay. Notice that this function right here, right? we have to just sort of make sure that we're not dividing by zero, right? But if we plug in zero to x, right? On the bottom, we get zero squared, which is zero. E to the zero is one. So we don't divide by zero anywhere. And then the rest of zero to infinity is actual numbers. So we're gonna get numbers all the way down. Since we have two continuous portions, right? x is continuous and e to the minus uh, e to the x squared is continuous the division must be continuous as well so that is my argument right uh, all parts whoops of f of x All parts of f of x are continuous, so then f of x must be continuous as well. Done. Okay, next thing up is two. We now need to show that f is decreasing. 
we need to show that F is decreasing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, calc one material still flies here. F prime of X, and you guys can go ahead and take the derivative of this, E to the X squared one minus two X squared over E to the X squared squared. It's a quotient rule, try it out, okay? So now we need to analyze this to make sure that um, it is uh, decreasing, right? It is decreasing over zero to infinity, right? Because that's where we're playing around in, right? Zero to infinity. Okay. So let's go ahead and try this out. At zero, right? Uh, we get to see this, right? At zero, this is one and this is one. So we square one, right? And this is going to be one. So it's gonna be a positive value, right? Okay. Let's go to one, to two, to three, to four, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, all of those values are positive, which means this is gonna be positive. This is gonna be positive, right? Which means if I square, that's gonna be positive. So the thing that's gonna sort of determine uh, our positive or negativeness or, or increasing or decreasing uh, argument is solely gonna be this portion right here, the one minus two X squared, right? And if you take a look at anything other than zero, right, that's gonna be a negative number. That is gonna be a negative number. So therefore, right, therefore, F prime of X, right, uh, is less than zero, right, uh, for X bigger than one. And that's all we needed. We have it that F prime of X is negative, right? Therefore, F of X is always going to be decreasing. We are done. We are good to go. So we are off to the races now. We get to play around with this integral. Okay. Uh, hopefully you guys see that, it. again, it's going to be a uh, improper integral. So limit as T goes to infinity of the integral from zero to T of x over e to the x squared dx, right? I need to take this integral right here. So I'm gonna separate that out. Uh, integral from zero to t, x divided by e to the x squared dx, right? Hopefully you guys see it for this one. This is a u substitution. So u is equal to x squared. So du over two is equal to uh, x dx, right? So this is going to be equal to the integral, and there's going to be a one-half up front now, e to the minus u du, which is equal to minus one-half e to the minus u, right? Now I get to undo my substitution, one-half e to the negative x squared evaluated from zero to t. I'm gonna keep going from this integral, from the one in the yellow, right? For that step, I needed to find the limit as t goes to infinity of this thing, right? Minus one half e to the minus x squared evaluated from zero to t equal to limit t goes to zero, negative one half uh, e so the negative t squared uh, plus, whoops, well, let me do this. Uh, e, the minus t squared minus one, negative one half, aha. E, the minus zero squared, okay. This right here, that's gonna be a negative one half, right? Oh, and I forgot, it's not zero, it's infinity. Look at me go. Okay, so the problem or the sort of the thing that's gonna define our divergence or convergence is gonna be this term right here, right? And if you take a look, right, 
this is going to be equal to, let me rewrite it over here, right? Limit as t goes to infinity of negative one half times one over e to the t squared, all right? Plus one half. Let me write that nicer. Got it? Okay. Awesome. Like I said, this is still going to be the thing that's going to determine our divergence or convergence, right? As t goes to infinity, t squared is going to go to infinity, right? Which means e to the t squared is going to, going to go to infinity. And then we're dividing 1 by e to the t squared. So then that means that this whole piece right here, that goes to 0. So then this is equal to 0, right? Well, zero uh, equal to zero plus one half, right? This tells me, right, that the integral from two to infinity, right, of uh, x over e to the x squared dx converges. And it fell in our lap. Since this integral converges, right, then the summation must converge as well. Your series must converge as well. There it is. That is it. OK? So like I said, uh, when you're doing the conditions, right, try to justify each and everything. Uh, the third condition is probably, like I said, the first one that you want to tackle get the function itself, right? And then do one and two, then grab the function, prove it's, it's continuous, and then prove it's uh, decreasing behavior, okay? And you can use uh, uh, the first derivative test or the first derivative to determine that, okay? Okay, next up is your first quick check for this section. Look at these, uh, determine divergence or convergence. You can use the calculator that I provided you guys to get sort of like a gut feeling for them. That's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. And then the very last thing, I'm not going to do an example because it's way too easy. I think you guys can get it. Um, it's a corollary. It's something that happens because of the integral test. Okay. Um, but it's something that happens after the after we cover the integral test. And it deals with stuff that has functions that look like this, x to the p. Anything that has uh, something that, anything that looks like this, one over n to the p, we call that a p series, okay? And what I wanna inject here, this theorem is not in the book. I don't know why they didn't put it in the book for this particular section, uh, but it should be. Okay, uh, is this theorem right here. Uh, suppose you had a P series. Okay, so, so, so suppose you had anything that looks like this, right? Automatically, easy, 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 easy answer, right? If that P, if that exponent P is bigger than one, right? Then automatically, uh, your uh, sequence, your, uh, your series, it converges. And if your P is less than or equal to one, right, then the series automatically diverges. So to determine convergence or divergence of this sequence right here, of this series right here, all you need to look at is whatever that P value is. If it's bigger than one, it converges. If it's less than one, it diverges you are done. You, there's no work that needs to be done. It happens directly from integral test. Okay. All right. So what I have after this is lecture questions. Uh, again, if you get stuck on any of them, come to my office hours. If you uh, need a little bit more help, come to my office hours, drop me a line. Uh, my office hours are Monday through Thursday from about 1130 to one o'clock every day. Um, and then I have my Friday times all day. Um, even if you like, even if uh, this, this has happened before, um, if I uh, if I uh, am not in my uh, in my Zoom room, uh, an email will be sent to me telling me that somebody showed up. 
Okay. Uh, sometimes I have to step away or sometimes my Zoom room closes unexpectedly. Um, if my Zoom room has nobody showing up for 40 minutes, it automatically closes itself. So um, just keep that in mind, right? Sometimes I like, a, you know, my Zoom closes without me knowing, uh, but it'll send me an email that says, hey, somebody's in there. Okay. Uh, besides that, if you got any, any problems with these uh, or the lecture questions uh, or the quick checks, stop by, drop me a line. Okay. Uh, besides that, I believe I'm done here. Happy studying.